Hi there, in this video we are going to create this animated background. This is part of my course uh, on Udemy and Skillshare, but here I'm going to speak a bit faster and get it done a bit faster. In the course you will get lots of uh, detailed information, much more than YouTube. But nevertheless, this is the animation we are going to create and my purpose here is to show you some motion graphics, some effects that are very helpful in your projects and in your creativity. So let's start. I have uploaded here a background which I'm going to create a composition from and I will call the comp simply main animated. In this composition here, I will lock the background layer. I will draw a few circles, something simple like this. I can have several layers or many layers. So actually this guy, I want to make it a bit bigger and uh, I think it's okay. Fine. So now we want to animate this shape layer using certain effects. So the best way is to pre-compose and call it animated background. Okay, and we open the new composition. So over here, we are going to create a new adjustment layer and call this adjustment layer. This is our first animation offset because we are going to go to effect and preset and take the offset effect and drop it on the adjustment layer. And this is what we are going to animate. The offset is very easy to use. It has only two properties and the main property, I don't care about blend with original, the main property here has only two coordinates, the X and Y. If you click and drag the X, not what's gonna happen. Another layer appear and another one and another one and it can go indefinitely as much as you want. It's very interesting. If you take the Y, you can do the same up and down, of course, for the X left and right. And the layer is being duplicated all over the place. So let's reset it and start our animation. I will click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe, press U to see the keyframe. And let's say we start from over here. I will come after three seconds. I will use the X and press shift and go to the right. I will go several phases the way I would like. Let's do something like this. Let's come to six seconds, use the Y and go down. Okay, as many as you want, the way you would like it. Then come to nine. I will use the X and go left. Try to put as many <laughs> circles as possible. Now we have more than we have created. At 12 seconds, I will use the Y and go up to reduce the value. Okay, maybe this is cool, something like this. And the last one here, I will use also the X and try to go back to put it just over here. So in the beginning, we have the X. That's the only one we animated, but notice the Y also is being animated. This effect misbehaves. I don't know why. So Y and X are being animated is not cool at all. How do you fix that? We want only the X to be animated, Y being animated. We don't want them to go diagonal. I don't like it at all. So the way to do that is to come to the graph here. You go to the value graph. This is the value graph. And the only way to fix this is to select them all, right click, actually is not, and come to spatial interpolation and make them linear. So actually you are changing the interpolation in between two keyframes, but you are not changing the kind of keyframe you are using. If you click OK and it's fixed at 100%, as simple as this, you will notice now the Y here is stable and the X is animated. And you notice here the X is stable and the Y is being animated. Please notice, guys, that I did not select the keyframes and go to make them linear here. I don't want to change the keyframes to linear. I want to change the interpolation in between keyframes, how the animation is interpreted in between the keyframes. And that's very important. These are two different concepts. Now to make it more interesting, let's go to speed graph. And of course, I will select all the keyframes here. I can play the way I want, easy is them, select all of them. They are selected and do something just like this. And then if you play, now you have something very interesting. Notice how it's gonna start and move to the second one and set it very nicely. So now we have circles moving around in a very random way almost. So let's add some more amazing effects here. Let's stop the animation. I will add a new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, I will add lens. So I will take the CC lens and drop it on the latest adjustment layer above the offset. 
come and change the lens here to something named lens. So the lens effect is very easy to use. It has the center, which usually I keep it in the middle. You can play with it. And it has the size and the conversions. Usually I like it as a positive at 100%. But then the size is everything. Size here really matters. Notice when I go up in size what's happening. But if you go up very high, you have no distortion. I will put it like around 180, 140. I think I like this. 160, usually 170 is cool with me. Of course, your choice. We are not going to animate the CC lens because it works very well with the offset. You have a very nice animation. Of course, you have to play with it, you know, adjust it a bit better. But let's add another effect that will change things even. So I will right click new adjustment layer. And on this adjustment layer, I'm going to add shadows. Find my shadow. And I have here the drop shadow. And drop the shadow here. Now, very bad things have happened because within the adjustment layers here, the shadow affects the lens, affects the offset. Not really what we want. We don't want the shadow to affect the lens. So I'm going to take it under the lens. Didn't work. I don't want it to affect the offset. I will take it down. And now you have the shadow only on the shape layer. So the order here is very important. Now within the shadow, you can start playing around the way you would like. And you can add some softness if you want to, not too much. And uh, you can play with the angle the way you would like. And the distance, let's reduce it. That's it, actually. We have done it. It's very nice. Now, what I like doing is to add another blur. Another blur only on the shape layer. I will add the blur. And I will use usually the Gaussian blur. And drop it on the shape layer. And add it just a bit. Usually what I do, I will lock this. Okay, so I locked the shape layer effect here for the Gaussian blur. Go to my main animation and start adjusting the blur from here. So now I have a good vision of what's happening and how I want it. Because blurring these shapes will really depend on the background and stories like this. So I'm going to put it just up. Then we'll do well, I think, with me. Let's look at our animation. And you have a fantastic, awesome animated background. Now, some of you might decide, okay, at three seconds here, where is stopping? I don't like the shapes where they are. How do you work with that? Well, the best way is to come to the offset here, press U, you have the keyframes, go to the graph editor, select all the keyframes, and of course you want to do in the value graph. So now what I will do is to select these two keyframes. For example, I want to change the Y and take them up or down, okay? Or you can change the X here. I will come over here and, okay, does it stop nicely? Ah, I think it's okay. So let's do something like this. Okay, let's stop here. Uh, something like this. Okay, we have enough shapes. Nope. Okay, that's better. We have to play with this one. So I'm going to use the red now. I like this where it's stopping. And then come over here. I like where it's stopping at the end. The end, not bad at all. That's the way to play with it. And it's quite easy, but don't change the values from here because you will have to do the whole job of the interpolation or something like this. Things might get messed up. Using the value graph is the best way to change the values. Let's go back to our main animation. Let's see our work and let's fit it. And we are on full resolution. And let's have a good look about what we have achieved. And it's very nice. So I hope you like it. I will hope uh, you will give me a thumbs up and you join my channel because I promise you, you're going to have lots of this motion graphics, visual effects and compositing and also video editing tutorials that are coming up very soon.